Hey, everybody. I hope that you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world today. Uh, if uh, you're following me today, I'm uh, the, the, the day this episode's airing, I am in Yellowstone. So if you're in Yellowstone, if you're in Wyoming, Montana, send me an email. Maybe we're close enough to hook up. All right. And if you're new to this show, thanks for tuning in. Here's what we talk about. We talk about entrepreneurship. And we do it through the lens of a real estate agent. And that's fine. If you, if, you're not, if you don't sell real estate, there are tips, strategies, tactics that we talk about on this show that can help you. Now, today's guest, this is an important episode, I think, because, uh, because most of you, most of all of us entrepreneurs, as we start off, we start off to build our own brand. We start off to build our own company. Now, today's guest did a very smart thing. He found somebody who had a brand, who had a company, who had a business, and he tapped into it. And now, now he added value to it, but he's a younger guy. Now, last week, her partner, we featured on the show, Florence Shapiro. She's, she's the luxury agent in Las Vegas. And, uh, and today's guest, Ivan, oh, I normally never say the names. I just did. That's okay. Today's guest, Ivan, uh, joined her, and he's a younger guy. So... Hopefully, by listening to this, you can understand how you can be strategic and how that you can join an established company. And hopefully, when the establisher, right, like in this case, Florence, goes to retire, you can take over the company. Um, so, again, we, Ivan, today's guest, he's a great guy. I had a, a lot of fun with this guy. And, and I can tell you, he gets to the meat of things really within the first 10 minutes. And I hope you have as much fun with this guy that I did. Uh, but what the main thing we talk about is how they created and they maintain the luxury brand in Las Vegas. Um, and, and there's lots of components to this and how he manages expectations, how he, you know, how he goes about his day, how he treats his client in a way that, that, is <laughs> that shapes his experience in almost a theatrical way. So uh, that's that. Before we get to this, really quickly, always a bit of housekeeping on the Twitter land. My ha- my the ha- the show hashtag is unpack that idea. My handle is at Super Agents Live. I would love to meet you on it, on Twitter in the Twitter as well as uh, you know if Ivan or Florence has a Twitter handle, like get them involved. Um, to uh, oh you my list i always i share things with my list that i don't talk about on the show so what you're going to want to do go to the site go to superagentslive.com download my free ebook which will get you on my list and uh and uh you know again get into the inner circle and and you know what and by the way i don't know if you know this i haven't talked about this in a long time we have a free membership site it's free Sign up for the membership site. We have a ton of spreadsheets. I, I, I spent a lot of time, probably a year ago, putting those together. But tracking spreadsheets, all sorts of stuff. Join it up. Check out all the stuff you can get for free. Now, later, we're going to start charging for that at some point. I don't know. I mean, I've, I've said that for a year, and we haven't done it. But go go sign up for that. Uh, what, what's left? What's left? Oh, um, so Facebook. We are creating the Facebook course for real estate agents. Now, most of you guys know how to post on, on Facebook. You guys maybe know how to buy ads, but when it comes to really creating copy that converts, when it's taught, you know, when it comes to like building, creating ads, when it comes to creating a custom audience or a lookalike audience, most of you guys don't know how to do that. And that's fine. That's not your bit. Like you guys sell real estate or you guys are in business. So, so we've built a course. Uh, we're in the middle of building it. If you guys want want it, you guys want to partake, send me an email and we'll put you on the list. We'll sit you and again, if you're one of the early buyers, you get a special, you know, pre discount kind of thing. All right, whatever. Hey, let's get to it. I hope you enjoy this. Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? 
My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. Today on the show, I'm thrilled. Today's guest is actually a teammate of somebody that I recorded last week. I had no idea. They have a really interesting story, and I want to get this person's perspective on it. I'm thrilled to welcome Ivan Share. Now, Ivan has done, uh, they have a team of 12, they have an admin of seven, they did as a team about 140 transactions, and they're in the Las Vegas market. Hey, Ivan, thanks for taking the time out today. Oh, no, thank you. So listen, so, so take a minute, take a minute, tell us a little, before we get into what you're doing with your team, but take a minute, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get into what you're doing in the business. I'm happy to. So <clears throat> I'm a transplant from San Diego. I moved to Las Vegas in 2000. And, um, and I, when, I, when I first moved out here, I, I was one of those guys that just kind of hadn't figured life out, hadn't figured out, you know, is real estate for me? Is it not? I've seen people make money. I, you know, I wasn't one of those people. Um, and I was kind of going back and forth between management and sales in, in the San Diego market and moved out here for family reasons. When I say here, I mean Las Vegas. And connected with a lady who, who you had on before, Florence Shapiro, um, and I, I went to work for, with Florence and I guess she had one other buyer's agent at the time. And I went to work with her for, um, as, as that buyer's agent for about four years. And in, within that time we connected and we clicked and there was synergy and there was no competition and it was something greater than just the one. And Florence was too busy. She couldn't, you know, her business, she is, um, I guess, I guess the best way to put it is, in Las Vegas, when you're going to buy or sell a luxury property, there's nobody else. I mean, you, you, you look at, you look, you look at Florida Shapiro and that's about it. And so four years into our relationship, she approached me with a partnership mm. and that wasn't too hard to, right. to process. Um, and we became partners and, and that we developed the Shapiro Insure Group and we've been partners now for 10, 11 years. It's just been an amazing, amazing journey. I'm very thankful. And and again, I don't want to I don't want to key off of what Florence has has told me, but but you do have sort of an interesting um, uh, setup. Um, what do you? Let's talk a little bit about from your perspective, Ivan, uh, the marketing piece. So how you, you know you guys are the brand? If you want to sell or buy a luxury home, you guys are the brand to do that in Las Vegas. How, how, other than duration, because she's been there for like thirty years. Other than that. How did you guys position yourself to be that brand? Such a great question. And there's, there's so many different layers to the answer. But I think the most important thing in, in any business, but especially in a business where it's sales oriented, is that the clients never believe that they're, they're a part of a process. They never believe that, that the dollar sign is the reason why you're, you know, that you're chasing the dollar. For Florence and I, it, it, you know, it's, it's always been the client first. And that, you know, that coupled with the fact that Florence literally started with some of the, the people, if, if, we, if I were to mention names, anybody who's listening would know the names, but of course we don't do that, when they were nothing. When these celebrities or, or business owners or casino moguls, when they were nothing and she had an opportunity to connect with them somehow, the service that she provides, well, we all provide great service, we hope, but the, the level of attention the catering to and just the absolute putting them first and helping them grow without any regard or minimal regard to, to the pocketbook or doing what's right for our clients. Um, and obviously that's within reason that I think is a huge separator, especially in the city of Las Vegas, like Las Vegas, I'm sorry, where people can tend to get caught up in the money and the flash and things like that. Well, yeah. And, and I, I, I how if you're selling a five million dollar house, how do you not start calcing out your your commission check? It's actually really simple. You know, Florence and I have close to and our team have close to a hundred properties for sale. And if we sat there um, and started calculating all those hundred, I'd say close to seventy, maybe sixty five, or over, priced over a million dollars. And if we started calculating, okay, this is our inventory, this is what we're going to make, we wouldn't get have time to do the business. And you take your eyes off the road or off the goal. And the goal is always a satisfied client. The goal is always a client that's going to say, hey, you know what? 
Toby, Ivan did such a great job. I'd like you to come work. You, you, if you're looking at selling your home, you need to talk to Ivan or Florence. And so that's the goal. And obviously, to do, you know, there's, there's nothing perfect. Everybody's going to make a mistake or, or, or there are going to be glitches. And we just we work through that as, as empathetically as possible. And, and the other thing that's important, I think, and I know I'm going a little long-winded here. No, that's okay. But the other thing that's important is, is to find out where you, where you made mistakes. You know, when, when a client calls up and is dissatisfied with something, it's not an attack. They have every right to be dissatisfied and find out what they perceive was it was an error where, where there was a, a wrongdoing and all of a sudden get on their side and work with them. And, and in, in, the, in the cases where you are at fault, alter that so that next time you're in a better position. So, so uh, uh, this next thought kind of ties in a little bit to that, but in a city like Las Vegas, where, you know, you know, if you are, uh, you, if you have a ton of money and you're, you're going down to the win, you know, and you're used to getting this super, super white glove service, right? I mean, because that's, that's why people go to Las Vegas and, you know, get the penthouse is because they want that white glove service. I have to imagine that, that some of your clients would make unreasonable demands of what they want. Hey, you know, Ivan, I, I, it's 2.30 in the morning. I just got done with playing craps. Let's go see that. Let's go see that $2 million property, $3 million property again. Right. And so that's where, <laughs> so that's where the skill of conversation comes into play in setting expectations. So we are all about service providing, you know, I'll, you know, doing what it takes to keep the clients happy and taking care of their needs. Um, but at the same time, up front, there, there's no harm in letting them know that, that you're a human being as well and you have a life. And, and by that, I don't mean that I'm not going to work evenings for you because I will. And by that, I don't mean I'm not going to work weekends for you because in my business model, I will. But it does mean that a 3 o'clock phone call in the morning will result in a voicemail. And the following morning will be a phone call to explain, I'm so sorry, uh, you know, my phone was, I turned my phone off after 6 o'clock at night or after 7 o'clock at night. But it's, it's all about expectations. Our clients, for the most part, are very, very satisfied with what we do. Um, beyond satisfied, we get when we have all of our clients write reviews on us, mm -hmm. so we can see the good and the bad, and think, thank goodness, the the good is far exceeds the bad. And we ask for opinions: what can we do better? What can we do different? How can we grow? Yeah, and that that, that goes that speaks to find out where you, where you did mistakes. Um, I had one thing in mind, and I and I I completely lost my. So 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 you said something. You you started off this interview with saying something. I think I think meaningful, and you said never let the client feel like they're part of a process. And then you started right. talking about commission check, but I th I think there's more to it, more layers than just that. Well, <clears throat> it's interesting because Florence, as my partner, is. I think this is this is maybe an interesting twist to the, to the question that you're asking. Florence and I are completely different people. Florence is older than me, and she's, um, she's far more formal. She's Chanel. I, I'm wearing Converse. And, and between the two of us, we connect on different levels with different people. But regardless of who the person is, that whether I'm there or Florence is there, whether they're formal or they're informal, regardless of all of that, the thing what, what Florence and I have is is uh, is a is a, an, an authenticity. Mm. It's it's when you sit down and have a conversation with, with me or with Florence. It feel, Florence, it feels like this. It feels like you're sitting down having a conversation. You want to learn about the market? There's nobody that knows more about the luxury market than Florence and I. For all those, we're the wrong group. It's just not. It's just not who we right, are. Right. For for on a national and international level, clients come to us because of the um, the expertise expertise that we have. Uh, what we represent, how we market, where we market to, and uh, and I know I've answered about ten different questions, but the actual question, but that's where I'm going to stand. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. <laughs> but okay, so so you know when I uh, I spoke with Florence and she's she's got a she's got your your two guys' personalities are are very different. I mean, you're the you know you're this fast talking sort of East. I know, look, I'm in San Diego. Um, and I know you were from San Diego, but you have like this East Coast tinge, and she's very deliberate and slow, and 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 you know she oozes trust, right? Whereas whereas you might not. Um, but so but she expressed to me that 
you guys are servicing buyers from China, right? From all these other countries. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I didn't get a good answer for her from her. It, 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 how do, do you, you have to have some sort of outreach prior to somebody flying from China, landing in Las Vegas, and then Googling luxury Las Vegas? What, what do you do to, to get in front of some of those people that are at a state or at a country? You know, part, part of it is our web presence. We, because of the number of homes that we have for sale and the number of quality homes that we have for sale and the effort that we put into representing those homes in photography and verbiage and mm. all sorts of things to, to catch you, you can't, I mean, seriously, it, it, it's hard to miss, it's hard to miss us. I mean, we are, we are everywhere. You can't, if you go onto Zillow or Lizzo.com or Trulia or Redfin or any website or any website, really, you're going to see the majority of homes priced over, you know, call it $2 million, ultimately falls in Florence and I. Got it. And so it's kind of like before they even call us, they know that we're the resource. Got it. Okay. Yeah, you know that's what she said, and and I think I think the way you expressed it to me k- kind of makes sense, um, or it makes more sense to me. I understand it now. W- w- for someone, uh, Ivan, uh, someone that wants to to follow your path and Florence's path, and you know maybe they're selling, you know, w- w- let me ask you this: What's the average sale in in Las Vegas? You know, we don't. You don't even it's know. Be around, it's got to be around two fifty three hundred. Okay, that'd be my guess. So you're selling you're selling three hundred thousand dollars houses. You wanna you wanna move upstream to to you know million dollar houses. What's what's something? What advice would you give someone if they say, Hey, Ivan, how do I break into that market? And and not your market because you, nobody can compete against you guys. But you know, let's say they're in San Diego where I'm at. Like, how, what was the what advice would you give them? Well, first of all, <clears throat> we you know we love competition. It's it's there's nothing wrong with competition. There's some great brokers out here. So I, I definitely don't want to say that there's no competition. Okay. Um, but secondly, I can, I can speak from where I came from. Because remember, I, when I moved here from San Diego, um, San Diego was a, was a kind of a stepping stone for me. When I moved here, I was lost. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was the person asking the question that you, um, that you just proposed. I mean, in fact, I, I, uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to do commercial, property management, residential, you know, luxury. It just, it just so happened that there was a connection and it's, and it's all about the connection. But the, I guess the, the answer to your question is for me, I became a part of a team mm. and in all candor, my, my, my thought process being entrepreneurial was, okay, so I'm going to become a part of this team at the time I was 30 years old and I'm going to learn everything that there is to know. And then I'm going to go out and do it better and do it myself. Mm. That was what I was thinking at the time. And I worked and worked and worked and, you know, it, it, the sacrifice has to be made. And, and again, I just want to, for me, my, my motivation is and was my family. I'm working so that my wife doesn't, didn't have to at the time. And, and my kids can have choices for them that, that money would, would, uh, that money helps with. And so I'm working and working and working. And about four years into it, right before I got approached with the partnership, I made the decision that, that, um, I was really happy with, with where I was. And even if I wasn't going to stay doing this because, you know, the, the, the volume that we do and have done is just, just tremendous. And, um, and at the time when it was just Florence I and, a, and a one or two other agents, uh, I made the decision to stay on the team. And then she approached me with the partnership. Mm. My, my, the direct answer to, to your question is find somebody that you respect and go work for them and go work for them and work for them and work for them. And, and one of two things is going to happen. Either you will learn and either you'll do an excellent job for them and you guys will connect, in which case there may be a partnership opportunity for you, or you'll get the knowledge that you need, you'll have, some, you'll have a financial cushion, and you'll be able to go out and start and do it on your own. Got it. No, that's that, that that's great advice. That's 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 great advice for people. And I think, I think you know what what you had, Ivan, was, was you had patience, right? I think too many people have impatience. They try to they try to push it, you know, to like go out on their own or, or whatever it might be, and that's when you end up, you know, getting frustrated and failing and flailing and and, and all that other stuff. Um, you know, you've been around, you, you've been around for, in real estate there for, for 12 years doing this ultra luxury stuff. You know, what is it that, uh, I'm sure you've seen a lot of people come and go. What is it, what, some of the things that you see people fail at? Look, let me, let me ask it this way. This is a better way to ask it. What do you know now, Ivan, that you wish you would have known when you started? Wow, that is a great question. Um, 
patience is a big thing. You know, when you're, when you're going through, when you're going through the process, you kind of either have to be agitated or, I mean, whatever your disposition is, it is looking back at it. It looks like I was patient. Maybe I wasn't quite as patient as it, as it sounds, but patience is something, and we're all, you know, continually learning and growing, but patience is such a huge, huge part of it. Um, the other thing that I learned is, is, and in these, these larger transactions, these sales, you can't take people personally. Mm. You just can't do it. And it's so easy. That's, that's hard not to do, you know, especially as a guy, when there's another guy on the other end who's angry or upset. Um, initially it was a very hard thing for me not to take their anger or their disappointment as being directed at me, even if they were directing it at me, you know, at this stage in the game, it's a process of, of kind of talking them off the ledge of walking them through the process of empathizing and, and slowly helping them, you know, you see me there and, and helping them come to realize that maybe it wasn't quite the way that it was. And if, if you are at fault, if, you, if, you, if there is something that you did and these are decent people, you step up and you let them listen, listen, I'm with you. We're going to do this together. Don't worry. I'm on your side. So I think, I think that that process and it's, and I'm sure, you know, I asked this question 10 years from now, I'm sure there'll be another set of answers. But that process is a huge process and very important. Your, your interpersonal skills are important. You know, I, I, I 100% agree. And I, and I, I got to tell you, man, is, is uh, that's, uh, that is something I personally need to work on. I don't necessarily take things personally, but when people get fr- fr- angry with me, like I, I lash back, man. Um, yeah. What, and, and just, again, hearing your personality, Ivan, I mean, you're, you're this high-strung guy, that had to have been – a little bit of a strap and I'm looking at a picture of you right now, man. You look like this boxer, you know, like that had to be a, 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 a difficult thing for you to ingrain into your personality. Florence was critical because you're right. It's not a part of my personality. I am a moderate. I mean, every, when I say a moderate, I mean, I'm a, you know, uh, I'm definitely not a moderate. That was the wrong term, but I am, I am somebody that, that likes to keep the peace and work things through. And I have that going for me. But everyone's got their lines. Florence doesn't. And so watching her over the last 15 years, I mean, you can't help but admire it. She'll sit and be quiet and listen. And as you said, she's very pointed in her and purposeful in her conversation. Yeah. She's slower. Yep. And one word from her or one question from her could be, you know, an hour's worth of discourse for me. You know, and that's, that's something that's, that's, again, we're all growing and learning. And that's, that's part of my journey. See, and this goes back to this goes back to what you said earlier, Ivan. You said, "Hey, find somebody that you respect, find somebody that you want to model, and and go work for them." How does how uh, uh, did you just get lucky with finding Florence, or 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 were you deliberate in saying, "Okay, this is the market I want. This is the person I should model." You know, and that was the other. I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to kind of do an attachment to 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 that uh, conversation that we had a few minutes back. Yeah, you have to be with the right person. You have to be with the right person. If you're, if you, if you're, if you, if you're working for somebody that's not understanding, Florence gave me so much flexibility, so much autonomy. She never told me I'm wrong. She never told me, and believe me, because of, you know, um, I guess my disposition, a few times of that, uh, of, of those kind of confrontations, and, and I would have been out um, and, you know, never had this great you know, partnership that I have right now. Mm -hmm. But the key to it is having somebody being a part of something and something better. So, I mean, character is so important in everything that you do. And the other thing that I learned, I'm sorry, I'm babbling, but the other thing that I learned is that uh, there's no grade in real estate. And it's, it's hard to understand. I mean, when you're just getting started, you see opportunity, you haven't been in real estate before, you don't know what's right, you don't know what's wrong. If it's, and again, learning this through Florence, if it's if there's a gray, step aside. Just step aside. No matter how, what the commission check is, no matter how it, no matter how what the financial reward is, you step aside. You take the high road every time, and then you can look at yourself in the mirror when you wake up, and your choices are simple. Yeah. Okay. But let, let's talk about that for a second. So, um, cause I, you said if it's gray. So, so you're you're meaning if it's a little bit shady. Was that what do you mean by that? And I, I think uh, kind of like a non-specific example that would sure. be some of the problems that happen to realtors 
um, in with with the with the uh, the mortgage crisis and the financial crisis and how realtors got made example of um, and got sent to prison. Some of them definitely, uh, you know, some friends of mine were, were uh, had a very difficult time and didn't do anything wrong and were made examples of, and now don't spend time with their families because they're in prison, and and you know people that would um, so in Las Vegas our market absolutely absolutely turned upside down oh, in yeah. 2007 yeah. for about five years. And what we had is we had people, we had buyers that would come in and offer to buy homes. They'd have these prearranged deals with mortgage companies. They'd offer to buy homes uh, at an inflated appraised value, get money back in, on the back end, and everything was fine. And the realtors were like, oh, let's, who, who cares? And many, many times, Florence and I had those, th- those same offers presented to our sellers. And we stepped aside and said, we advise our clients against it. Mm. We said, this is illegal. You're going to get in trouble. And those that chose to do it, we would let them out of their listings and let them do it. It's a hard thing to do when your market's turned upside down. Yeah. It's a hard thing to do, but right is right. Oh, man. Uh, I mean, I think that's really great advice. And, and uh, let, me, let me tell you something that happened to me a few times. And I, and I got sucked into it. Here's, here's what it is. So during, you know, I started, I started buying and flipping houses back in 09. And I, 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 I was deliberate about finding real estate agents that I wanted to work with. And, and, I, and one of the things was that, you know, I, I, you have to have a relationship with a bank if, you know, if you're going to, because as an investor, I want, that's what I want. So I found a few of these people. Now, <clears throat> this one girl, she showed me a property and she said, uh, how much do you want to pay for this? And I told her a number. Uh, I think I, I think it was, I think I said like one sixty. I think I you know I, I said I'll, I'll pay one sixty. And at the time I was paying land assessed value and getting the structure for free. So she said, "What if I get you this for a hundred grand?" And I'm like, "Great, do sure, right?" And, the, and 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 she did. And then she got me another one like that. And I said, "How are you doing this?" And what I found out was that she was, I mean, again, I'm in San Diego. She was listing the property for Wells Fargo, uh, right? Or, or whatever, putting on the MLS as pending with no picture, but the banks wanted to see that, make sure that the ML, it was on the MLS, but what she was putting it in the Los Angeles MLS. So, you know, they'd be sitting there with my cash offer and they would not get an offer for four or five months. And then finally go, okay, that's it. We'll take Toby's offer. And, and, uh, I, you know, I kept doing it until I couldn't do it anymore. But you, you telling me that, you giving me that advice in, in the audience, you know, maybe I shouldn't have done that. It's very personal, it's very individual, um, and you need to, you know, it's something you've got to be comfortable with because there's nothing worse. And you know what? What ended up happening is um, I, have a, I have a very close family. I have wonderful parents, great brothers and sisters. And my parents, I was watching, my parents as they're entering their 70s at the time in their 60s, I was watching during this time where some of their friends who are successful made millions and millions of dollars and more as they were slowly going, uh, you know, getting, uh, um, um, you know, going to prison, you know, getting, getting indicted for things, which they didn't think, you know, they, they, they thought they were in their retirement years, in their golden years, Jeez. and now their families are torn apart. And I thought about that. I said, you know, what commission is worth that? Yeah. What deal is worth the insecurity that, that I could potentially face in my 60s and 70s? And the answer is nothing. Yeah. There's no money that's worth that. I agree. So that's, that's the road. That- no, that is great advice. I mean, I, and I appreciate you did that. Cause, and, you know, and, and a lot of ways that's like, you know, the, a similar thing is, you know, cheating on your taxes, right? As you know, if you own a small business, yeah. it's, you cheat on your taxes, but you know, you have that open, you have that insecurity for the next seven years. Like, am I going to yeah. get audited and are, are they going to get me? Um, and, and let me, let me be even more honest with you. It's more than seven years because they can go retroactive and they yeah. can break their own laws. And it's, 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 it hangs over your head and you just got to, you just got to for yourself, for your family, for your own integrity. Cause we define our integrity by our actions, not by what we say. Oh, I love that, man. Yeah, so you said it earlier, you, you, you referred to character. It's all about character. Well, look, Ivan, we got to start wrapping up here, but you know, l- let me ask you, I'm going to, I want to ask you one crazy question and then I'm going to ask you the three standard questions that I always ask. Here's the crazy question. And, and really I, you know, you've, you've delivered some great, great nuggets to the audience. Uh, you know, about character and being honest and, you know, doing the right thing. It, and I want to make sure I get all the, everything I can out of you. So here's the question. What's something I didn't ask you, but I should have asked you. Uh, 
I guess, I guess my response to that is, you know, um, I guess, do I love real estate? You do. I know you do. But tell me, tell me, yeah. Tell me why you, tell me why you love it. I don't. What? I don't love real estate. Real estate is a vehicle. Okay. Real estate is an opportunity and it could be widgets. It could be real estate. It could be internet sites. I mean, (laughs) non-porn internet sites. It could be, it could be anything. And the, 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 I guess we all have our struggles and mine isn't even really a struggle. I'm so fortunate. I love, I love my, I love my business, Yeah. but, but it could be anything. It could be absolutely anything. And I don't love real estate. Florence loves real estate. She gets up in the morning with a smile for real estate. I get up in the morning for a smile to work a business. Right. And it doesn't matter what that business is. I love you saying that, Ivan, because so so much, so many times we hear like, "Hey, go find your passion, right? Like, pursue your passion. That's the only way you're going to make your business work." And I, I don't, I, I'm, in, I'm in your camp. I don't, I, my, you know, my passion has always been build a business, whether whatever it is. And I've done, I've done tech startups, I've done low tech startups, you know. Uh, so uh, I, I appreciate you saying that, and I, and I think, I think a lot of people are going to get, uh, you know, feel better for themselves. And go, man, you know, about that. So I, again, I appreciate that um i think the more i think the more successful you become at your business the more you'll enjoy it yeah yeah before i get to my last three why what is the thinking in terms of business because you know because you know in terms of business there's two things right you have your top line you have your bottom line now the way that you guys uh, dole out commissions for what you give your team members is and I was telling Florence this. You guys are. I think a lot of people say you're crazy. You, you know, she, she explained to me that you guys give, you know, these high end uh, le- listing leads away, or I'm sorry, I should say leads, leads to your teammates, but yet you only get uh, take a fifty percent commission. That's that's un- that's don't people don't do that. So it's interesting because we actually start at fifty fifty, and we go up to uh, eighty twenty. So it's holy the, smokes. And, and, and so here's, here's the deal. Okay, Forrest and I are very fortunate, and we have a very fortunate business, and we've been, we're, we're, we're thankful for that. And then there's a bunch of, peop, bunch of other agents that we have that have lives and families and uh, relationships, and, and they have their own worlds that they're living in, and we believe in them, and they believe in us. And we together as a team, work, we work together. And my goal is not to make every single penny that I can off of every agent. It's not like that for us. We've got our business. We've got our business that works. This is kind of a supplemental thing where we help each other. So Florence and my goal is to help them have an amazing life and an opportunity. And those that work hard do and those that don't, they don't. Wow. Wow, man. I, 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 you know, I, when, when we air this, I know that you guys are going to get a ton of calls going, hey, I'll move from Nebraska to join your team. Um, so here's, here's my three questions that is my standard questions that I always ask to, to wrap it up. And, and the first one, I think I know the answer, but I'm asking you anyway. So for you, Ivan, who has been your mentor along your path to success? Well, one of them is definitely Florence, but yeah. I, you know, and, and specifically to real estate Florence. And I have an uncle who passed away a few years back in La Jolla uh, in San Diego when I was, when I was trying to figure life out and he took me under his wing and I learned about making the right choices, very similar to Florence. He did not have her success, but he was all about integrity. So, so definitely Florence and Stanley uh, in the real estate industry, but without question, it's been my dad. Um, that's, that's, where you, that's, that's the, um, um, that's the uh, integrity part. It, it's hard to learn that. You have to live it or make, or make those choices every day. And I lived it. I lived it with my dad, with my, with my mom, with, um, but, you know, man to man, it was my, from my dad. That's awesome. For a book recommendation, here's, here's the setup. I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? God, it's, you know, and it's, I went through a phase because I've done everything. You know, when we're trying to find ourselves in our niche, back to the entrepreneurial side of life, I've done everything from, you know, MLMs to uh, sales and all sorts of things. And there's such great Great, great books. I mean, there's, there's the old Dale Carnegie books. There's, um, yeah. uh, but <laughs> you know, there's, there's a book that I read and it's not religious. I mean, it's not business or even religious and it's called conversations with God. Hmm. And it was a spiritual book, kind of a new age 
interesting book. And it, it totally, you know, it totally changed how I see people, how I see life. Has nothing, it has nothing to do with business at all, but it has to do with how, you know, what our expectations are in life. Nothing to do with religion. In fact, it's, you know, I'm not a very religious person. Um, but it's an interesting book. And when I read that book at the time, uh, it just, you know, was pivotal for me. Um, do you remember, I'm trying, I'm looking it up right now. Do, do you remember the author? Yeah, I, I remember the ad. It's called Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. Yep, okay. And, and, and you want to make sure, because he had a series of books, and he had a series of workbooks and workshops and all sorts of things that came after it. But the one that you want is called Conversations with God, Book One, An Uncommon Dialogue. And it's an interesting, interesting, thought-provoking interpretation of why we're here. For everybody, if you want to get a copy of this book... Um, and read it like, you know, and, and uh, maybe have it affect you like it did Ivan. Use our link. Go to audibletrial.com slash superagentslive. My last question that I always end with is, is this, Ivan. Do you have a personal habit that you feel has contributed to your success? You know, um, I'm kind of going to go back to what we originally talked about, about being authentic and genuine. Yeah. One of the things, you know, I know my strengths, I know my weaknesses. I've got so many weaknesses. We, we, we need a new talk show just to talk about my weaknesses. <laughs> but my, my strengths are that I am very believable, and, and, I, and, I'm, and I come across as authentic and genuine. And when, you, when, somebody, when I meet somebody, it's very hard or very rare in my 20 years in this business to have them not want to work with me. In fact, most of the time, the challenge is having other agents clients not wanting to leave them to come and work with me, which I won't do, by the way. I won't, if, if, oftentimes I'll ask them for my card and I'll politely decline when I'm showing another agent and their clients at home. But my, my strength is um, my believability and my um, connection with people. It's, it's, it's very, um, it's true, it's real, it's genuine, and, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's served me well. How do, how do you get that across? How, how do you... Why is that? I mean, I I, I don't know if I I'm, I'm I'm answering the or asking the right question, but how what what, what do you, <laughs> so let's ask that? What does it look like? What does it look, what like? Does it look like? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and it's funny because Florence and I have it in different ways. Florence is her hers is in intent is is in actually my favorite Florence stories are that. Florence has been there for me in all sorts, all parts of my life and, and my family's life. And oftentimes I'll turn to her at the end of the day and say, you know, Florence, I just don't know what to do about this with one of my children or this is going on. I'm just, you know, I'm just not sure what to do. And she'd say, and she'd say oh, wow. She said, have you tried this? And, and then it'll be done. The next morning at 7 a.m. my phone rings and it's Florence. Ivan, I've been thinking. Those are the words. Mm. Ivan, I've been thinking. Who does that? Most of us are engaged in these like superficial, you know, one dimensional conversations to get by high, high, how's it going great. And what she's internalized is the skill of listening and, and embodying and empathizing. Mm. And every time without fail, the next morning I get a call. I have never been thinking when my children were growing up, this is what happened. And I'm floor, every time it floors me because it is so, so amazing that somebody has that. Um, and <clears throat> so Again, I know that didn't answer your question for me. No, 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 that, no. That's good. That's good. And I, I think, I think, I think. Again, here's here's what I take from that, Ivan. If for me, and I, I, my sense, I could be wrong. My sense is you, you, you would like this too. So tell me if I'm wrong. If somebody asks me a question, or somebody says, "Hey, Toby, I'm struggling with this." I'm the way I'm wired is bang. Like I, I just I start talking, and what I don't do is sit back for a minute and reflect. And and give them better advice. Um, so and I and it, that 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 it, it talks to patience, talks to that reflection. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's that's a ish challenge with you that you used to have. Maybe you've uh, worked it. I, I definitely, you know, I'm definitely still working on it. And you're right. The big part of that is really listening to what the words are and what yeah. the concern is. She'll ask a set of buyers a completely set of different questions than I would not wrong or right, but we approach the same problem or the same challenge from different angles. And it's interesting to watch her and see the results, the, 
the result that she gets, um, I guess, versus the result that I get. And, and I, don't want to, I don't want this to come across wrong. We both do well. We both connect with people. We're both personable. She, and we're both, I feel, very genuine. But the reality is, is, that, is that through her, I've learned a lot of what I still need to work on. And, 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 and I do, I know, I know I only told you it with 30 minutes. So just, just bear with me for a couple more minutes. <laughs> uh, so Ivan, but, but when I, you know, when I, what does it look like? Is it when you, you know, when you meet with a pr- prospective seller or buyer or whatever, is it that you ask more questions than, you, you know, do, do you come off as an expert by telling them all the stuff that you know, cause nobody knows the market as well as you do, or do you just ask a ton of questions? What, what better, where do you lie in that? Well, there's, 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 there's the pre-meeting. It's very rare that somebody walks into our office and I haven't met them before or, sp- or spoken to them before on the phone. So the series of questions that I ask on the phone, you know, it's like, tell me about your family. Um, why are you moving to Las Vegas? Uh, have you been here before? I mean, really qualifying them, the learning about their life and what they do and why they're moving here. And kind of keeping that engaged. So when I do meet them, you know, now remember that they, they're familiar with our online presence. They're familiar with our, the, you know, either a referral or our online presence or, or the homes that we have for sale. So the credibility factors, factors, um, is definitely there. And then, you know, the other part of it is that when I have them in the car and I'm taking them around to look at properties, I've been involved with or know of just about every luxury transaction, and that's maybe an overstatement, but you get the picture, yeah. that, that's, that's involved in the city. So when people are asking me questions, I'm, I'm certainly credible, and I, and, I, um, and I don't come across salesy. It's the last thing anybody wants to feel is that they're sold. Yeah. You want to help them you want to help them you want to help them buy their home, but you don't want to sell them their home. Yeah. And so it's not, there's no sales pitch. There's no sales pitch. I mean, I'm very proactive. I'm, I'm when, when I, when I feel like they're real and they're looking to do something, I'm on it. I'll get them there. I'll get their questions answered. I'll have five other homes that are not on the market ready for them. So they feel like they got a, a great, by, by coming to find me, that they've gotten something that they couldn't have gotten with another realtor. Any realtor mm. involved homes in the MLS. Right. But because they're my clients, I can go call them and say, hey, listen, I got a client coming to town. You're ready to sell your house. And it's an opportunity to list as well. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, I got to tell everybody, I'm going to direct everybody to your website later, but you, or, or right now, but you have this very interesting, uh, from my recollection, this, this private collection where people have to sort of, you know, you, you do some research on them before they can even see those houses. Well, look, hey, Ivan, I always suggest to my, cl- to my clients, to my audience, if, if they've gotten anything out of this episode, to reach out and say thank you to you. So, so where can people find you? Well, it's, it's real simple. They can, they can email me. They can call me. I'm, I'm always, or, or like to consider myself always available. Uh, my direct cell is 702-400-2400. Um, and my email address is Ivan at ShapiroInsure.com. And I can spell that. It's Ivan, which is my name, I-V-A-N, and Shapiro Insure, which is, you know, we're a division of Berkshire Hathaway, but this is my partner and my, my brand, spelled S like Sam, H-A-P like Peter, I-R-O, which is Shapiro, the word and, A-N-D, and then my last name, which is Sure, S-H-E-R. Com. Yeah, and by the way, for everybody, listen, all this stuff, as you guys know, will be on the website at Super Agents Live. So just go there if you're, you know, you're probably walking your dog, driving, or riding a bike. So uh, so just find it go there. Hey, listen, Ivan, I'll be the first guy. Thank you so much, man, for coming on and, and sharing. Thank you. Thank sharing. you. All right, buddy. Hey, well, listen, uh, let's, let's definitely stay in touch. You got it, man. Thanks, Toby. See you, bud.